We are live. All right. Hey, everybody. How are you? We are going to have an awesome live session today. If everything goes as planned, we are planning to do what today? Good morning, everyone. Well, we're going to oh, feature. Oh, here we go. Hang on. Michael Powell joined Wave. Uh, we are going to have a special guest today. Now, let's see if he requests or if we invite him. Let's hmm. see. We'll figure that out. We have There's a... first time for everything, right, Brian? This is, this is like the real true live. Here we go. Here we go. View request. Yes. Awesome. Over here. All right. So, let's see if we get him on board. Yay! There he is. It's Mike. Absolutely. How? Did I get yeah, that? You did. Correct. Excellent. Excellent. So, so to, to all of our from your feline family who have Hi, Mike. our frames in their house for their cats, you probably know Michael's work, Mike Powell's work. Mike, we're going to be putting it up in a minute. Mike has contributed. He's one of our. Yes. Oh. Why'd you touch it? I don't it was know. Perfect. Why did I touch it? Wow! Hang on, Mike. This is live. This is live. Man. Need phone books now. Oh, Brian. <laughs> well, walk away for a well, I wanted to see. Live I TV to see is there rough. Okay. I think, I think I need a booster seat. There we go. You can sit on like your leg. There we go. You okay. it. Well, you know what? <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. Hold on. Now I know. Here we go. Because I don't think we can adjust like any of that. No. no. Okay. This, this, is like, this is my booster seat. Right Sorry, here. I'm going to grab a pillow. Look at this. There we go. Is that better? <laughs> okay. So let's see, let's see. So let's backtrack here. Oh, I'm still really short. I get another one. <laughs> okay. So just to backtrack, for everyone who owns a frame your feline uh, frame ensemble, let's see. they may have your work hanging in their house for their cats to enjoy. Hello, Lama you, Freeman. Hello, you, 57 counselor. <laughs> everybody's jumping in jumping here. On. So Michael Powell, Michael Q. Powell, he has uh, amazing, stunning work to choose from the interchangeable uh, artwork panels. And he, you've contributed a lot to the wildlife section. So everything from eagles to squirrels, <laughs> right? And, and cats love it. Cats love looking at the wildlife. But you've also contributed a lot to our nature category for artwork as well. So fl flowers and butterflies. Um, insects, by the way. Butterflies and spiders and spider webs. And drag did dragonfly. I know someone had recently dragonfly. Yes, somebody recently yeah, purchased. special meaning with that. But we should say good morning to everybody and introduce ourselves first. All right, let's. Like you're just jumping into the meat, and I want to switch up the artwork panels. And... Okay, well, all right. The elephant in the room is today is Valentine's what? Day. Uh, is that why you're wearing pink? <laughs> so, so we've got a couple of our Valentine's Day artwork panels as backdrops for today to celebrate Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you, Michael. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody watching. To Winnie. And if you're watching this at some future date, <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. Okay? Okay. All right. And we're, we're dressed. We didn't we're, even coordinate, but we're wearing Frame Your Feline Pink. There you go. And we're ready for Valentine's Day. So uh, I am Brian. And I'm Christina. And we are uh, co-creators of Frame Your Feline, FrameYourFeline.com. If you're new to, you know, Frame Your Feline, what is Frame Your Feline? It is a way to showcase your cat on your wall like a living work of art. <gasps> Amazing. It's the best cat shelf. It's best cat bed. Best cat superhighway as we have here. Yep. So 
If you uh, want to find more information, go to frameyourfeline.com. That's frameyourfeline.com. By the way, we have a sale going on right now. We do. $100 off every feline frame ensemble. You don't need a coupon code. Get it while it's active. And um, it's only going to be out for the next few days. So if you're days. watching the replay next week, sorry. it'll be gone. Yeah. Um, okay. So enough of that. <laughs> Let's. The reason why we're here today is we are going to be discussing one of our biggest contributors, or one of our greatest content creators, creative creators, <laughs> creative creator. Can you say that? Is that? A, I'm feeling if you say creative creator, you open up some sort of weird portal into some other time and dimension. But five times. but anyway, I digress. <laughs> uh, we're here with Michael Q. Powell or Mike. Powell. You have to ask him, what does the Q stand for? I know. I think Q uh, stands for coin. Uh, no, not quite. Guess number two. Somebody, somebody's famous dad that we know. Yeah. It, it's definitely not quiet. Okay, but. Or Quirrell. <laughs> no, no. There, but quiet. there, there no. are lots of, not too many Qs no. actually. <laughs> but it distinguishes me from lots of other Mike Powell. <laughs> no. That's yeah. true. Q is an interesting. I didn't like it as a kid, initial. but hmm. um, but you know. And then at one time, I actually thought about going as M. Quentin Powell, but I'd need a Ooh. Roman numeral after my name. Mm. I'm gonna call you quintessential. Quint East. Quint Eastwood. Uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, there's Holly. There's Holly. And okay. she's deciding. Well, she knows I'm going to switch out the artwork panels. So, okay. which one should we start with? And then let's ask Mike about. Maybe Grab a random one. Right. We're going to talk to. We're going to see. We're going to. We're going to try to figure out how you do what you do. All right. How about we start with this one? Okay. So, which category is this on the website? This is this is an artwork panel called. Uh, it's called. Uh, I should know <laughs> what it is. Open it up. Well, it's in, it's in wildlife. Yes. It's in the category wildlife. So if you don't have this artwork panel yet, it is awesome. Cats. It's so funny when cats lay down in front of it. It looks like they're getting picked up by the eagle. Um, so I, I want to talk about that particular picture. It is called Eagle in Flight in the um, wildlife category. You you take. We're going to talk about your blog in a second, um, your photography blog. But you do, you're able to take lots of great imagery of, of bald eagles. Oh, there's Winnie. Where are you taking these Where are, First of all, where are you taking these pictures? And how long do you have to wait to get these amazing, like, action photos? Or if they're well, in that, the, um, in that too. I, I should first say that. Unlike you, it's not morning where I'm at. It's afternoon because I live in Northern Virginia. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, good afternoon. And that's actually the <laughs> response to why it is that I'm able to see bald eagles. I go to a wildlife refuge that's about 15 miles from where I live that's just off of the Potomac River, and we are blessed to have lots of bald eagles. And this wildlife refuge, Occoquan Bay uh, specifically, has at least three active eagle nests that I know of, and maybe a fourth one. And uh, so, although the roads are closed to the eagle nest when it's nesting season like it is now, um, I have a really long telephoto lens. So, um, it's it, the question, how long does it take? Um, as long as it takes, because you, because when you, when you <laughs> see an eagle, um, you're at a disadvantage because the eagle's probably already seen you. His eyesight is better than, than mine. His reflexes are better than mine. So I have to actually um, react really quickly. And um, the answer to the question of how do I, how do I get, I, I have a really Whoa. long telephoto lens. Um, uh, and, and, and that's- That, that is- uh, well, with, well, yeah, that's, I, I broke too. part of it, but uh, wildlife, <laughs> wildlife, wildlife uh, it's, oh, it's it can be hazardous to both your health and your equipment. 
um, because you bang into things and you fall into river. Well, I haven't fallen into a river, fell into a stream, but, uh, but yeah, so it's a, um, it's lots of patient waiting and then spring into action and you have one chance to get it right. So, so it's, so it's unlike studio how far, photography where how far um, you, you can like set up the lights and ask your subject to turn this way or turn that way. Uh, wildlife doesn't let you do that. So you kind of like take the chances that you get, but if you know where to look for, for the subjects, you have a big advantage. So, um, so how far away am I? I'm pretty far away when I take shots most of the time. Um, except when I'm not, uh, because, because occasionally, um, you know, occasionally eagles will fly away when they see you or other birds will fly away, but sometimes they'll fly towards you. So. See like that, that shot of the, of the eagle yeah, just yeah. So sorry. He, he might've right? been taking off. And poor little Holly. If I took that, if I took that picture, it would just be a blur, Well, you right? have to be, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> It's sort of like any kind of sports players that spend a lot of time practicing um, in order to get ready for a game. That's kind of what I spend most of my time doing. I can walk around for three or four hours at a whack, um, you know, practicing so that when the moment comes and I have an opportunity, then I'm able to take advantage of the opportunity. So, wow. Um, yeah, You're out there for a while. Just you, you tend, you tend to need to do that. Um, because the the subjects are unpredictable and you never know where where you will find them so i just find pretty pretty good amount of joy just wandering around with my camera waiting to come upon something um some other photographers like to stay in one spot and wait for the action to come to them i'd rather go look for it yeah, yeah you, you go and find it um i think that's one of the you know, you talked about how hard it is to get. It's yeah, not you like can. you can stage a photo, yeah. right? With, with animal, which is cool about bring your feline because <laughs> the cat just looks at you from the frame, so they're always posing. <laughs> but we can't get a frame your eagle. That's, um, yeah, that's a yeah, hard that's a, that's a little harder so, to get him to fly. Um, the and you you and. So, in motion like this in the frame it's very difficult thus we we have not started yeah you can put eagle you can yes you can put food yes. down in the frame for the cats to try to encourage them to go into the frame the eagles you'd have to put live fish down um if, yeah oh whoa, 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 <laughs> maybe live maybe live cats um or let's, unfortunately let's, as i saw this year a live duck is also a potential target so no. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, see that I see this is why I couldn't handle wildlife photography. Yes. I'd be like, the, the, you know see, Sorry. the problem Sorry. is the I've gotten over that. Um so, you know, the I understand that everybody everybody's got to eat. Um and so people feel, you know, sympathetic when you see something that's really beautiful that's suddenly turned from being prey to being or predator to being prey. Um so Every time I see a nature special where the frog throws its tongue and grabs a fly, I feel well, that fly. Well, I, I, I I've got pictures of a snake who's yeah. swallowing a frog, yeah. and I sort of feel for the frog, especially because he gets swallowed back in first, so he's crying out as he's being in death. But that's oh, like, okay. but I, we don't have any of those yet. Dark. I don't want to go there. So I just, I switched the <laughs> eagle from the gold, the gallery gold frame to the cherry wood, traditional cherry wood. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to talk about another. All right, let's, okay. let's keep the show rolling. We've got, but, we've got other prints. One of the things you as, you're, as you're seeing that is, um, some of my friends ask me, how is it that I see all this stuff that I take pictures of when they go to the same places and they don't see any of it? Um, and that's, that's oh. an interesting question. Um, usually I'll turn to them and give a Zen-like response when they ask me, how is it that you see all that? And I look at them and say, and how is it that you do not see that? <laughs> you, you know, I think it's when you're, so, so we're going to talk about this in a second, but it's like, if you, 
if you bought a blue Honda, a blue car, blue Honda car, all of a sudden now you see every blue Honda, that same car when you're driving yeah. around in that kind of car. You know what I mean? So maybe it's like this. You get what you focus on. Yeah, you get what you focus on. This is um, in the nature category. Because nature includes insects and such. And this one is called... Butterfly on. There it is. It's called Butterfly Lunch. So it's, it's munching on a flower. This is an amazing photo that you took here. And the colors are so vibrant. So now, now we're going from the long lens where you took the eagle photo to yes. macro, right? Where you're kind of getting in really close. No, this is actually photo, and this a is macro like lens. Five um, miles. The, the, the thing that they both have in common is I really like to try to zoom in as much as I can on a subject. Um, in the summertime, I'm tended to take pictures of insects more than birds, because the birds in the summer have an advantage that they don't have in the winter, which is leaves on the trees. Uh, it's hard to, s to watch birds when they're covered by leaves. Um, and the, the macro photography is actually what I started doing photography more seriously with, was with a friend who did macro photography, did a lot of birds um, and or a lot of insects. And so she did flowers with a few insects. And I started with flowers with a few insects and then eventually gravitated towards insects with a few flowers. Um, dragonflies are what I especially love. Butterflies, especially the monarch butterflies like that one are just really special. But again, they don't pose for very long. They kind of like are flitting from flower to flower, gathering some nectar. And and that's actually like, I think a Mexican right. sunflower, if I remember that flower right. It's uh... well, it's, it's really pretty. It's really pretty. It's, it's one of the most picked images the butterfly i think it's the colors and it's just it's just a Green beautiful orange, yeah. beautiful image and looks amazing in the gallery gold and you know um when the cats are hanging out in there you can take some great pictures of well, your cat with a butterfly. A, it's just you've beautiful. emphasized um, a lot of times that you know that that picture looks pretty with a cat but it also looks really pretty hanging on a wall without a cat and that's one of the cool things about it, the interchangeable art panels. It's art. Art. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah We're nice. getting some hearts right now from you guys. Um, for those of you who are joining, if you want to type in the comments area, if you have a question for Mike, um, if you want to let us know how many cats you have or where you're watching us from, that would be awesome. That would be, that'd be great. So because you mentioned dragonflies, I think... Do we have one? I no, don't. we don't have we that. We don't. One. Okay. Kind of crazy Kershaw got that with their sweepstakes. Yes. So we had we had at the tail end of last year we did a big sweepstakes, and our I think it was the grand prize winner. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, they're going they, to be joining. They, 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 right. So they selected the dragonfly. The look at me. It's called look at me. And it's in the nature. You have a couple dragonflies in our nature category, but that one is fantastic. There's this great. You have to go to our website for everybody who's watching later on. Go to frame your go to frameyourfeline.com. Go to the artwork panels area and then select nature, and you will see a few dragon, a couple of dragonflies. You'll see that butterfly photo in there as well as the backdrop. But there's this image of a dragonfly. I yep. think it's a Halloween pendant dragonfly, if I'm not mistaken. And it's called, Hey, Look at Me. Now, why is this called, Hey, Look at Me? It's because the dragonfly is literally looking at the camera, <laughs> meaning you, Michael, right? And it's got this smile on its face. And it looks like it's literally going, Hey, Look at me. Right. So I, um, you know? okay. oh, crazy if, if you look shot. behind my head, I have a dragonfly hanging on my wall. That's another one. I can't remember if that's uh, 
if that's available or not, but um, it's a, a blue fa a, a dragonfly that has blue eyes and a red body and is just and perched on a little leaf. And so, and so, yeah. It's amazing. You have some great dragonfly photos. It's almost like you, you, have a you actually could. Um, I spend innumerable hours search, trying to search for dragonflies and, um, Dragonflies are even more of a challenge because you have to be like super stealthy to creep up on them um, and to get close enough to be able to actually see the facets on their eyes. They have like a thousand facets on their eyes that um, project images so they can actually see almost 360 degrees around. So it's really cool. Wow. Well, we have, we have crazy, I see that we have yeah. crazy Kershaw, uh, who is the actual winner. And she selected your dragonfly, the, uh, hey, the hey, look, look at, at me. me. The dragonfly is, she's writing it right now, the dragonfly is especially meaningful to me because it is the symbol for my brother who passed away. So immediately yeah. it caught my attention. Isn't that wonderful? That, you know, I mean, and, and so, um, and if, if Crazy Kershaw has a question for, for Michael, you can go ahead and do that. Um, you can type it out and Mike will answer any questions you may have while we do that. <laughs> because we haven't yet had three people on, <laughs> nope. on the live yet. So Here we go. This is another awesome moment that you captured. So this is in the wildlife category and it is called, hang on one second. We had butterfly lunch and this one is called Bluebird buffet. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you call it bluebird buffet? Because if you look, you caught this image of that right. seed. Uh, these are blue, well, the, these the, are, the, what are these blueberry? The, the plant is sumac. It's uh, sumac uh, berries. Um, and in the winter time, when when some of the normal insects that some of the birds would normally be eating are not available anymore. They'll actually eat berries and seeds and other kinds of things. So they're, they're kind of like vegan during the winter time and um, carnivorous in the summertime. So, the, so Bluebird Buffet, that is an amazing, that, I mean, just to yeah. capture that moment of that, see, it's wild. It's wild, and wildlife. And uh, 57 counselor wrote, nice to see you, Michael. Beautiful work as always. Blue heart. Yes. And, and, and uh, Crazy, Crazy Kershaw. Kershaw says, wow, that is stunning. It is an amazing uh, backdrop there. That is an awesome photo. There's a photo we don't I have. Gotta find, I gotta really find it. It's gotta be the fox. You, you need the oh, fox. Oh, I need the fox. There's a great photo of a fox it's on a frozen an ice. Fox. Like, standing on ice, right? It's a frozen pond. But you also have a bird ah. mid singing and there's steam coming out of the mat, out of the beak as it's in the cold. Okay, that's a I gotta find, I gotta request. find, yeah, <laughs> the, both of those request. are far enough back that um, I can't immediately lay my hands on them, but I know which ones they are, I'll have to keep looking. I have multiple hard drives with terabytes worth of photos. And so it's a little harder to find some of them. Okay, we got to dust, dust those terabytes off <laughs> and find those. Um, but let's let's get into this category. Yes. So yes, it's uh, Valentine's Day. Yes. The city of love. The city of love. Uh, Mike is a world traveler, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have I have yet to travel outside of my little bubble. So I, I live <laughs> I live vicariously through the photography and artwork panels that Michael has been so wonderful in uh, letting us uh, have on our site. Curious. We have you do uh, photography uh, structures and uh, city photography. So you don't just do wildlife. You also do images like this. Look at that. Isn't that yeah. beautiful? Sunrise. Um, okay. This is, yeah, this is under the category. If you go to frameyourfeline.com, go to artwork panels, go to the category called City Kitty, get it? <laughs> and um, in fact, 
uh, we just yes, yeah, so this a, is a woman in Simi yeah. Valley just purchased. Um, no, they they oh. they we had somebody just get sunrise on oh, the, sunrise on the same on the same Ten. Had to teach Brian same or sign same Ten. Or sign. Ten. Yes, um, we but the up. the answer to your question is, um, you know, sort of the broader question of why do I why do I take pictures? Um, and I, in trying to share with people, kind of like the way that I see the world, and in my view, there's beauty to be found everywhere. And um, 2019, I went to Paris, which is a special place for me, and spent three weeks there, wandering about in the city. Um, taking pictures. Um, I used to be a French major when I was in college, spent my junior year at college in France, um, and sort of majored in French language and literature in college. And so I've gone back a few times since then to France. Now, that could be the source of my initial creativity. But shortly after I graduated from college, I joined the army and spent 20 years in the army, which is not exactly a creative pursuit. Um, so, no. and, and it's so like I worked awesome. as an analyst, it's... and then I, after I retired from the army, I worked in, for the government as an analyst. So, so this whole idea of taking pictures is to kind of rediscover that creative part of myself. And I used to think that only special people, only people that were super super talented, were creative. But actually, it turns out you, you, there it's it's something that you can kind of like um, discover on your your own because I think everybody has a creative part. Um, your your six year old is incredibly creative. Don't don't let him lose that. Uh, that I mean, but too all too often, you know, we become hypercritical even of ourselves, and you know, we're like, oh, I can't draw or I can't paint or I can't take pictures. Um, it turns out you can um, if you sort of let yourself, you know, free yourself from those inhibitions. So. That's uh, that's kind of the source of why is it that I, that I took those kind of pictures, which are different from my wildlife ones. Now I did go look for wildlife and did took a few uh, wildlife shots while I was in Paris, but um, it's a little harder in the middle of the city to find wildlife. Well, well, you have great you have a great eye. It doesn't matter whether it's wildlife or if it's a structure or just getting the framing right of an. That sunrise picture. So there's a couple of them. Um, the one that we have up in the frame that Christine just put it is uh, called Notre Dame at dawn, right? And it's just a, it's a it's a wild. Oh, the picture. the, the thing about Notre Dame um, at dawn, of course, is you have to be up at dawn. And and so so a, a substantial part of the the pictures that I take are are a factor of being there and being patient and persistent. Um, that, you know, it means kind of going out in all weathers and going there at different times, early morning, late in the day. Um, and that's, that, that's how you have the opportunities. And the skill part is when you take advantage of the opportunities. And so. Well, I think the discipline thing, I think this is where your military background comes into play because there is no way I'm getting up early <laughs> enough to take that picture. And the problem with the problem with sunset yep. images ah, is I'm yeah. having dinner. But it's having a, dinner. it so, turns out, though, the I more can't... that you do it, um, the better that you get at sort of like seeing and sort of pre-visualizing what a picture will look like. Um, there's a famous photographer whose name was Dorothy Lang who said uh, something like, the camera is an instrument that teaches you to see without a camera. Um, um, so you 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 learn to sort of like see and and you suddenly become much more observant so that even when you don't have a camera in your hand you're you're seeing things um and imagining hey i bet i could do this well that's a, that's a good question do you run into that problem where you're where you're somewhere and you don't have uh, your camera uh, on you? yeah you're like, on ah! occasion that that is the case um this past summer i drove cross country um drove to to Seattle, Washington, by way of North Dakota and Montana and um, Idaho. And um, yeah, that was the, of course, that was a case of, I really wanted to be taking pictures while I was driving, but I really shouldn't, so I didn't. Yeah, don't do that, don't do that. Um, uh, unless it's a UFO. Yeah. Because that's happening now. <laughs> 
We need some good UFO oh, shots. Oh, I hey, don't know. The government's do shooting me a them favor, down. Start taking some photos. Oh. <laughs> All right. What do we got here? A very oh. popular. Oh, this is popular. This is. Oh, this where this is well this is, is actually this? on rue du montorgueil in paris um it's a the mariage frere is is actually a tea shop that sells tea and the little green door just to the side was the door to the airbnb apartment that i was staying in that was on the sixth floor um um now ah. sixth floor doesn't sound too bad except there was no elevator and the stairs were narrow and winding. Uh, so that, that was quite the challenge to make sure I didn't forget something in the morning when I would go out. Um, but it was cool. It was a, the, the, the apartment wow. was used as a studio by an artist when he wasn't renting it out. So it was, uh, it was really cool. But yeah, so, so this is a, a picture really where you can actually see that the challenge was to capture the light. Um, because it was evening time and you can see reflections in, on the on the pavement, um, which cobblestone kind of pavement. And capturing the light means it's a really slow kind of thing. So I think I was leaning up against a light post or something to be able to hold it steady for that long. But we'll shot. Yeah, the, the, the ground looks flat and reflecting the lights. It's just beautiful. The, the shot is great. Christina, you're gonna point something out? Oh, well, this is actually well, not a photo. Well, yeah. <laughs> Talk about what happened. Well, it, uh, oh, it started oh. as a photo. <laughs> so if we, right. it, started it started as, as a, a photo. photo. If you look closely, it looks like it's illustrated. It looks like it's- Rotoscoped almost. Like hand-drawn. It's really cool. It's got this great artistry effect that what happened was it was run through an AI process of painting this image. And it looks like a hand-drawn like hand drawn paint. It's just a really cool look. Why did you uh, do that, Mike? Copyright problem. Do you know why? Copyright you know concerns why? are, do you know we didn't have any faces in that one, I don't think. Be ah. Yes, you did. So there's a pizzeria oh. right next oh, door and there's and there's people in there and in the photo you can see their faces so we the the way <laughs> get around we didn't want to a model release. oh that's you right know, yeah so so now it kind because you did that with another so anyway, um, one which had one other image that you had which is called yeah, Drella yeah that was one of my it's favorites. It's a woman so. on this bridge. It, it is, uh, the colors are pretty cool. And it's a woman on a bridge. She has a red umbrella standing in the rain in this bridge. It's beautiful. But yeah, in the you can photo, see we could see her face clearly. So we, we, uh, we ran it through this artistry process. And it's really kind of a cool effect for these two images. We 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 try to do that sparingly. Um, but it's nice to offer paintings and right. And so there there's yep. there's also one I know that uh, we did some work on, which had a nighttime view of the Seine um, with lights reflecting that I think has a moon in it that appeared. Yes. So that one I'm looking at right now is called. Wait, how do you say the same sign? Sen? Sen. Yep. Sen. Sen at right. night. And it's called Sen That was one. I was, I was on a bridge and, and had my, I, I don't know if I had my regular, I, if I had my iPhone or whether I had a, my camera, but I sort of like held, had it there on a little tripod on the, the bridge looking out to capture the nighttime light. Yeah, this, this particular image has a paint like a yeah. oil painting effect and um and it, it's really cool and there's a moon and it's just it looks it looks awesome it's a great great image again frameyourfeline.com go to go to artwork panels and then find city kitty as the category and you're going to see a, a bunch of mike's
photography and work there. All right. What do so you? So this is our last one. And last then one. we'll talk about the blog. Okay. Yes. All right. Oh, there we go. So, going, coming back, leaving France. Oh, oh this leaving is France. actually Where in, is this? Um, in uh, outside of Seattle, Washington. So, yes, this is yeah. It's this is in our landscapes category. And what's really cool here is, again, we, this has a cool artistry effect. And when you look at this with your cat in front of it in one of the feline frames, it looks absolutely awesome. So yeah, that was in Washington when, State. What were you doing in Washington State? Yeah, my son is State. stationed there. So, so on Latin for this past year, I drove or this past year I drove there and then the year before I flew there. So spent some time, you know, wandering about uh, with, with trying to, you know, visualize landscapes. I saw the bridge. I knew I had to get far enough away to get it like that. So you actually have to go through this winding path down lower levels. So I was lower than the bridge when I shot that shot. You you also have other pictures in that category from yes. Mount Rainier. You have the Snow Peak, which just looks it has this cool oh, like I love that one. yeah, it looks like snow okay. drift yeah. and cold and you know. It, it's but you, yeah, again, I'll I'll start, you can find beauty anywhere, um, and you can you know take photos to capture some of that. But it's it's more than just pointing and shooting because there's a, a number of creative decisions on how you're going to set the camera and more particularly how you're going to frame the shot. Um, so ideally you frame it the way that you want. So you manipulate the viewer's perceptions to see what you want them to see and not what they might have otherwise seen. Um, it's not really manipulation, but you're, you're trying to let them see through your eyes, see the scene the way that you saw it. Um, and so I have friends where I sometimes will shoot side by side and we'll come away with drastically different images of the same thing. If you go high, if you go low, if you have different kind of gear, um, it, it's a, people think photography is capturing reality, but the reality is somewhat subjective, depending on a point of view. Hmm. True. Well, I mean, we find that when we shoot with Jackson, we give Jackson a camera, yeah. and he's down here, and we're up here. It's it's we're like oh, he's got a good when <laughs> when I'm out and about and I'm shooting particular things for frame your feline. Like in my head, I'm always thinking, how would a cat look in front of this scene? So I kind of position myself in a certain <laughs> way to capture that moment with a cat in mind right in front of that image. But you, your pictures just lend themselves perfectly for the frames and um, we can't thank you enough. Your work is unparalleled, Mike. Uh, you are an amazing photographer. I don't think you give yourself enough credit. And, um, and we know our family of Frame Your Feline users, customers, um, they love your work too because they're they're always selecting your work <laughs> so good stuff and and we couldn't be prouder to have you as part of our creative community if you could could you let us oh, know what your coordinates okay. are where are you at online well, how do people find well the, you? the the go for it as brian mentioned i have a blog that i've posted to almost every day for the last 10 years um it's at michaelqpowell.com uh, if, if you remember the Michael Q. Powell, it's uh, michaelqpowell.com. And um, it, it started off initially because I wanted to find a place to, to sort of host some pictures. Then I discovered that it's actually just as much fun to express myself creatively with words. So I'll kind of like have stories to go with pictures. And, um, and that's how Brian, when he was asking me about photos, actually could find some backstory of the photos of what was this and where is it and all that. So I tried to identify all of that in the blog and then talk a little bit about what am I thinking about or some cool fact about a, a subject. And um, so it has a little bit of educational kinds of things as well as like 
if I point out, hey, that's a female so and so, they're like, well, how do you know it's a female? And I'll tell them, you know. To, you, you, you. <laughs> well, you were you were the inspiration on our site to give each artwork panel a little backstory, history, or something funny. Like right. it's not just an image, but there's something behind it, and along with your imagery, yeah. we put in there. Fun on facts, where the was taken, right. right? Along with your credit, but it's kind of a, it's a neat way for somebody when they have it in their home, they could say, oh, if this is, this was a picture of the such and such bridge and it was taken here and it was done by yeah. this uh, Michael Q. Powell, who's an amazing photographer. Yeah. By the way, I'm a subscriber to his blog. You should be a well, yeah, so, so, blog so, too, to a lesser right? extent, I'm on so, Instagram and Facebook, uh, Facebook a lot, Instagram, not so much, TikTok, almost never, but uh, I'm, uh, and so I'm trying to now expand into video. So um, trying to learn to shoot some video and then um, it turns out it's actually harder to shoot video of the kind of wildlife that I shoot um, than it is to shoot still photos because. Um, that, that's why all of those like PBS wildlife documentaries. No. No, it's not fake, but it turns out you have to you have to you have to be on a tripod to hold it steady enough because if I if I shoot like the eagle might have been shot at a thousandth of a second. You can stop action if it's a thousandth of a second, but if you're right. shooting video, you've got to hold it steady so that it doesn't look like the Blair Witch project or any other kind of um video. True, true, true. Well, um we thank you for joining in. You are our first Creative, oh, creative, creative Corner. Creative Creative. Yes. It's our new thing. It's it's the Creative Corner series on uh, From Your Feline. And so you are the first guinea pig. So thank you. And um, we will, uh, we just want to say thank you to everybody who is watching. Again, if you're curious about From Your Feline, go to frameyourfeline.com. Check out all the free feline frame ensembles that we have. Gallery gold, contemporary silver, and traditional cherry wood to choose from. We have hundreds of artwork panels for your kitty cat to enjoy posing in front of on your wall. We are happy to have you on board, and we will see you on the next Woo. Creative Corner. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.